All right, we just finished our assignment two. And I'm going to show that in photo piece so you know how to save it because this is going to relate to the, the project I am now going to introduce, which is our first proving ground. So our assignment two has all these different layers. And they're all in there in the PSD file for the body, for the head. But then we made a combined layer and we clone stamped and then we made another combined layer. Doesn't matter. As long as you turn your background off and then save it as a PSD for yourself and then export it as a PNG, what that's going to do is save it all as one layer that is cut out, that has transparency. You know, empty space, that's what this gray grid means. When you do that, it's going to go to your downloads folder. You can't tell it to go anywhere else, so you then save that to your desktop. And then to see that, you can just double click it and it will open up in preview with a gray background. But when you put that same PNG into Canvas, it will have the white background. So this is how you do logos. And when you have to rasterize them, this is how you do anything that will show the background behind it that doesn't fill up a rectangle. Things that fill up a rectangle are like assignment one, our landscape project. We saved that as a JPEG so it would fill up the whole rectangle. So this helps us understand the difference between these two online file formats. The PNG, which is what our creature should be, and the JPEG, which is what how we submitted our landscape to Canvas. Now we're going to continue to use that PNG, but if we needed to clean it up better so that its edges were nice and clean, we would do it with our PSD file, right? And then export it as a PNG. But we're not going to move our PNG onto our JPEG landscape. Instead, we're going to open up Assignment 1's PSD, in photo p just showing you how you can get these files ready so we're going to open up our assignment one psd the more you can work on assignment one till you're happy with it the better and easier it will be for the proving ground because our assignment one has all of these different layers to it it has foreground middle ground background it's got atmosphere so now, if I take my PNG from assignment two and drop that in, especially if they're both at the right resolution, right? Then I can put my creature, let's flip them, and I can sync him as a smart object into my landscape, right? So right now he's on top of everything, but if I just move him down one, then he's behind the textures immediately helps him sink in. And then he's behind the foreground rocks. And then he's under the water, right? And then he's outside. <laughs> so the requirements of this proving ground, it's called a creaturescape. We're putting our creature into our landscape. We can pose them, we can size them, but they need to take up at least 25% of our composition for the creaturescape. So if I liked him this size, that's 25%. That's great. But what if I liked him much, much smaller and kind of hopping around on the mud over here? Then he's not 25%. So how do I fix that? Well, then I would crop down to a composition where he is more prominent in it, right? So it's not where's Waldo for your creature. Instead, you're really trying to prominently showcase your creature. And then we're going to learn how to match the lighting, match the angle of the anatomy, play things like things like uh, cast shadows, atmospheric effects, all of that. And then we'll save it as a new file. So I'm going to say um, save as, and then change this name to proving ground one. And it's going to be my surreal lizard. I don't know. Or I'll just say surreal creaturescape. 
I actually call it my grotto creature scape. Remember, when you save, I always want you to use your name on it. That helps. Okay, this is the actual introduction to the assignment. It is unit six. So if we go to the home page, I've now saved that PSD for my creature scape. I can now create a folder within my class folder that is proving ground number one. But what are proving grounds? Proving grounds earn you your creative problem solving badge. So how do I learn about the creative problem solving badge? Well, if you go to your modules, your unit modules, all the way to the bottom, you'll see that there's, at the end of the class, you'll claim your creative problem solving badge. And it gives you information about it. And then it will have you review all of the different assignments that went into it, including this first proving ground, which is the creaturescape composite. You have to meet each of these criteria, but the important thing is we're just putting the creature into a landscape in a way that's believable. We're doing three different things, and we can see them all through our next unit, which is unit six. So, the three things you need. You need an image that shows your creature at at least 25% of the image. And that the creature's anatomy and lighting matches the environment. Next, you need to write your physical dimensions and your pixel dimensions, or your pixel resolution, and then determine whether that's good enough for standard screen resolution or standard print resolution. And then third, you need to write a little paragraph, not very long, describing how your creature lives and survives in that environment. All of this is to do this proving ground for creative problem solving, which is called identify patterns, right? And you want to get a full half point on each of these in order to, to earn the one and a half points for the proving ground in order to make progress towards your creative problem solving badge. There'll be four of these assignments through the class. So the first one is, did you accurately identify the resolution, the pixels per inch, and the physical format, aka the print size, while identifying which two main types of digital art resolution for your, for your creature scape is sized for? So whether it's screen or whether it's for um, print, right? Next, did you place your PNG creature file onto the landscape in a way that utilized a common light direction accommodated for the angle of your creature's anatomy? And then, did you explain how your creature is intended to interact with its environment in your post accounting for atmospheric and practical concerns? So if you do all those, you'll get the credit. So, what can you do to prepare? Clean up your assignment too, so it's a nice clean PNG. And go back, make sure you can find your assignment one and that you have those three layers of depth to work with, right? Where you can kind of sync that creature into different levels of the image. If all you ever saved was a JPEG of assignment one, you're going to have to recreate those levels of depth, which is a lot of work. So this will help us learn to, to save our work, keep them at the right resolution, on and on and on. All right. That's it. I'll post these videos, including this intro to our first proving ground. And proving grounds are not assignments, so you can turn these in late and still get full credit for them. But it's good to keep up with us through the, the work because all of our deadlines are all still there. We just keep following the course outline. But it's a good time to catch up and work on assignment one and assignment two a little bit, improve them as much as we can to help with this project.